Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another casting of Supreme Commander Forged Alliance featuring the FAF Lobby. Today's episode is starring two high-ranked players that I know nothing about. To our west is the indomitable and much-beloved Lame as a Seraphim ACU. He's got a bad case of the shinies because I put my settings on high, and apparently that means lots and lots of bloom. I'm gonna turn that off for the next video. To the east is the mysterious Cybern ZLO. Mysterious because I have no idea what the Z could stand for. It could stand for anything, the guy might be devilishly foreign, or worse, charmingly foreign. If he's charmingly foreign, we have no idea what he's gonna do. He may destroy lame, or he may seduce lame, you never know. Cybrans, of course, are cyborgs, hence the name Cybran. They're not very creative, but they are computer people. So if you will, try to imagine that ZLO's ACU pilot has the sexiest cybernetic mustache you have ever seen. That should give you some perspective on the kind of power and enigmatic gameplay we are about to see in this match. So, now I really like this map because they've got an area in the center that you can fight for. It's got a little bit of mass, mass of course being an essential resource that you need for building your army, but they've also got some areas at the south that you can get into for tricky stuff. They've also got armed civilians on the right and on the left just to make a flank march a little bit trickier if you've got a large army. You don't want to walk your forces into the range of their guns. It would appear that Lame has decided he's built enough with his ACU and his main base, he's gonna start moving out. Spamming land factories, because what's better than a land army on a land map? He's trusting his engineers to build all those factories while he heads out to the center to pick up this mass out here. Not a lot of really big stuff, but enough things to make it kinda nice to go out there. The ACU is the only thing with a mass vacuum tough enough to survive at the front, so it's really the only logical choice to go to the center. Engineers would just get picked off by scouts. Although surprisingly, we're not seeing a lot of scouting from either side. Although it is still the first two minutes of the game, so I shouldn't worry about it too much. Looks like both players are just getting their houses in order before they strike out in the world. With, of course, the exclusion of Lame's ACU, who is all on his own, a big boy now, he can do it by himself. Just such predictable behavior from the filthy, filthy race that is the Seraphim aliens. The Cybrans are the far nobler and much more tactically aware faction. They are very stealthy, in other words, which is kind of their thing. Of all four factions, the Cybrans probably have the most unique playstyle. Their units are a little bit faster, they have a slightly higher rate of fire, and sometimes they have a wider area of effect with their attacks. They're also the only faction to start off at the basic tech level with a light gunship, and you can see that ZLO is actually getting one in the air right now. They are air units and they hover in place so they can give a lot of trouble to engineers or ground units that don't have proper anti-air assistance. And here we go, here we watch this little bastard zip over the hills and fly right into Lame's base where he begins shooting an engineer. And sure enough, it's an engineer that was commanded to build a bunch of power generators, so now Lame has got to give that command again. Now, of course, the Cybrans have a downside to all this versatility and speed, and it's that their units are very fragile. So Lame gets out these anti-air guns, and ZLO has got to retreat that gunship, maybe try an attack somewhere else. While dealing with that, it looks like Lame has decided he's going to build a land factory here in the center. He is claiming this space. If ZLO wants it, he's got to come and fight for it. Meanwhile, ZLO has decided to settle on a hydrocarbon plant back there. You little gunship bastard. That's the thing about those mobile AA guns, is that they're able to handle gunships pretty well, but they are significantly slower than gunships, so they can't hardly catch the stupid things. But ZLO tries to pull an exit to stage south, and that gunship is gonna need a letter home to his loving family, because he is dead. Lame is starting to get some units up to the front, and then of course another gunship shows up to ruin everything! Lame probably wishing that he'd built an air factory at this point. Interceptors would be a lot more productive for stopping those things. Lame is still steadily working towards growing the size of his land army, but the problem with those gunships is when they show up, if you don't have a quick answer to them, they can make everything substantially worse. Really, just try to think of a situation that they don't make more miserable just by existing. Suppose you get a parking ticket, and then your enemy has gunships. Suppose everyone forgot your birthday, and then your enemy has gunships. It just, you know, makes you want to shoot all the gunships down, but you can't because your mobile AA has to drive out there, and then the gunships leave. For some reason, ZLO started to build a power generator. Do not know what is up with that. Whatever the case, all that pelting from that unanswered gunship is really starting to stack up on Lame. His ACU is in the yellow, feeling the hurt. But here comes the ground army to back up Lame's ACU, pushing ZLO back a bit. Of course, the mobile AA is in the very back, getting to the battle slowly, and here comes a second gunship to cause more trouble. 
Lay him stranded out in front just a bit, scooping up some mass. He's starting to build up his forces, and if he can just hold that center for a while, maybe keep an advantage, he can possibly push out soon. For whatever reason, ZLO had two spider bots, the basic cybern equivalent to T1 tanks, down there at the south. They weren't going to do a whole lot. But it looks like Lame is now preparing to move his guys out at the south, possibly for a flank march. ZLO still building more gunships because, hey, why mess with the working strategy? You know, if it ain't broke, just throw more gunships at it because sooner or later it will explode. Lame is still leading at the front with his ACU, kind of dangerous at this point given that he's losing health and those gunships could come up at any time. We've got his guys coming up the ridge at the south, but here come the gunships who saw it over the hill. Man, I'm telling you, got jury duty? The enemy has gunships. So much for this strategic move from Lame, now he's got to pull a full retreat. This has gotten so bad for Lame. It's cut off avenues of strategy, it's done so much damage to his ground army. If he had just built an air factory and started spamming interceptors, a lot of his problems would be solved by now. As it is, here we saw him trying to build a static AA gun just to deter these stupid things. He's had enough. Stop doing that to try to shake off the enemy ACU. We've got more of Lame's units just coming around the bend, going up from the south of that rock, and getting picked off by those gunships. I swear. Got a letter from the IRS? The enemy has gunships! He's trying to get us around on ZLO's ACU, moving his troops forward, but here come a few more spider bots to shore up the numbers behind ZLO and push Lame back. Lame's ACU not going far from the front, though. He doesn't want to get away from that mass. If he can just scoop up enough of it, he can rebuild his army and bounce back and maybe make up for the losses. Of course, ZLO punishing him for standing out, just zinging him with those gunships. Hey, your bills are due, and the enemy has gunships. I can just imagine what Lame is thinking. He's committed to this land spam, and he's saying to himself, by God is my witness, I will make this strategy work. I just need more land units. That's all this is going to take. That is my plan. But of course, here comes ZLO, realizing that all the anti-air is at the front, and none of it is at the rear. There he is, shooting up Lame's base. A couple of anti-air turrets may be able to scare off one gunship, but four of them? A squadron? You're not going to be able to answer that very quickly. Lame has the anti-air, but it's all at the front. He's got to move it to the rear, and once it gets to the rear, those gunships will come around to the front. ZLO has, in a very fundamental way, taken control of the map. But here we see ZLO is getting swarmed by Lame's units. And Lame goes up in radioactive flames, taking ZLO with him, putting a draw for the map. Well, I gotta say, I kinda knocked the strategy, but it turns out that all Lame really needed was just enough land units. A good game on both sides, and what I really liked the most about this match was the way that you got the difference between a sort of static, slower moving but larger army, versus a much smaller but highly mobile force. Both very valid strategies, but diametrically opposed and creates a really interesting dynamic. So that's it for this game, kinda short, but kinda neat. I'll catch you guys next time.